In this video, we're going to cover how to move from the units of one substance to the units of a different substance. Before beginning, I want to talk about the just a review of what we've covered so far. So in this unit, we've talked about the idea of a mole. And we looked at that a mole is equal to multiple different units. For instance, a mole is a number, and it's equal to this number of particles. A mole is a mass, and it's equal to the mass that's found from the atomic weight on the periodic table. And if you're dealing with a volume, I mean, excuse me, if you're dealing with a gas, a mole is also a volume and it's equal to 22.4 liters as long as we're at standard temperature and standard pressure. So a mole is multiple different things. But when we look at that, we know that that mole is for that specific substance. For instance, when we look at a mole of let's say argon, one mole of argon, we know that a mole of argon is equal to a number. It's equal to 6.02 e to the 23rd particles. And because we're dealing with argon, we call them atoms. So a mole is 6.02 e to the 23rd atoms of argon. But we also know that a mole is a mass. So we go to the periodic table and we look up argon at 39.95. So that 9 in the tenths place gets rounded up. So it becomes 40.0. So 40.0 grams of argon. And since argon is a gas, and we will assume it's at STP, standard temperature and pressure. And any gas in this unit, we can assume that it's standard temperature and pressure. We also know that it's going to take up 22.4 liters of space. So this is the four conversion factors that we get. And we've spent a lot of time on how you go from moles into atoms or liters into grams, or grams into atoms, or atoms into liters, and we write down what's given, we make our empty fraction, and we put the units in to cross out, and the units that we want, we went over that quite a few times. But I want to point something out. Every single one of these units, whether you're dealing with moles, atoms, grams, or liters, they all deal with the same substance, argon. So every time we use this conversion factor, we are changing the units, moles, atoms, grams, or liters, but it's always for the same substance. The question becomes, how do you, how do we change from one substance like argon into a different substance. What if they give us a question that asks us about, let's say, xenon, but they give us argon? Or what if they give us a chlorine and ask about fluorine? Or what if they give us phosphorus and ask about iron? All of the problems we've dealt with so far we started with argon and we ended with argon. But what happens if they ask us to change from one substance into a different substance? That's what this video is going to cover. So let's start with a type of question that we would have. Let's say that we have nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas producing ammonia. Ammonia is NH3 gas. To balance this equation, I have to put a 2 here. That gives me 6 H's 
and now I'll put a 3 here that gives me 6 and I've got two ends so that would be a 1. Previously we learned how to balance chemical equations by putting coefficients in front of the balanced in front of each substance of the balanced equation. I now have two ends on this side and two ends on this side. I have six H's on this side. I also have six H's. The way that we're going to interpret the coefficients is this. We are going to say that one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. If you think back, we previously would have called this one molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of ammonia. Now we are going to call these coefficients moles. One mole of nitrogen, three moles of hydrogen, and two moles of ammonia. Now, here's what a question might be. How many moles of ammonia, and ammonia is NH3, how many moles of ammonia are produced from, let's say, six moles of nitrogen. How many moles of ammonia are produced from six moles of nitrogen? The first thing that I want you to notice is they are giving me information about nitrogen, six moles of nitrogen, and they're asking me for information about something different, ammonia. So I'm not going to use these types of statements because if they would have asked me about nitrogen and, and given me something about nitrogen, it would have been the same substance and we would have used this type of format. But because they gave me something about nitrogen and they asked me about ammonia, I have to use a different format. But the process is going to be the same. I'm going to start by writing down what's given. Six moles of nitrogen. I'm going to make and multiply by an empty fraction. So just like we did these types of problems, we would write down what's given. We make an empty fraction. And in these types, we had four things to choose from to go into here. We're not doing that this time. This time, because we're starting with one substance and going to another substance, we have to use the balanced equation. Because they gave me moles of nitrogen, from my balanced equation, I'm going to find moles of nitrogen. And in this case, it is one mole of nitrogen. And because they asked me about ammonia, I'm going to go to put ammonia on the top two moles of NH3. Because the moles of nitrogen will cross out, and now two, six multiplied by two gives me 12, divided by one gives me 12, and the answer is 12 moles of NH3. So if you start with six moles of nitrogen, you'll end up with 12 moles of ammonia. We are given information about one thing and asked for information about something else. We have to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. How about this one? How many moles of nitrogen will react with nine moles of hydrogen. Once again, they gave me information about one substance, hydrogen, 
and they asked me information for, about a different substance. So I'm not going to use my other four conversion factors that we've been using because if they would have asked me about hydrogen and given me information about hydrogen, the same substance, then I would have done this process. But because they gave me information about hydrogen and asked me for information about nitrogen, I'm going to use the balanced equation. So I'm going to write down what's given. 9 moles, 9 moles of hydrogen, and I'm going to multiply by an empty fraction. I know I want the moles of hydrogen to cross out, so I'm going to find the coefficient that's dealing with moles of hydrogen, and it looks like there are three moles of hydrogen from the balanced equation. Previously, I filled these two with information from one of those four, but now I'm going to the balanced equation because they gave me information about one substance and they're asking me for information about a different substance. Nine moles of hydrogen, three moles of hydrogen go on the bottom. Now I have two options for the top. I could put one mole of nitrogen on the top or I could put two moles of ammonia and H3 on the top. This one already went to the bottom so that the units will cross out. That always occurs that way. So how do I know whether to put this one on the top or this one on the top? We look back at the question. How many moles of nitrogen? So since they're asking about nitrogen, we're going to put the one mole of nitrogen on the top. The moles of hydrogen will cross out. And you'll notice that this is a ratio. A 9 to 3 ratio is the same as a 1 to 3. And it comes out 3 times 1 divided by 1 is 3 moles of nitrogen. So this allows us to start with the information about one substance and find out information about a different substance using the balanced equation, the coefficient from the balanced equation, which refers to the number of moles of each substance. I hope this helps in moving from the units of one substance into the units of another substance.